praying for snow. I guess you didn't pray hard enough. So we'll pray a little bit more. It's supposed to come tomorrow. Okay, that's from our official uh, carolers who are out Friday night. So that's good. So don't give up hope. There's still plenty of time left of that. So but we're all glad you were here. I remember several Christmases where it was just kind of sketchy whether we even get to Christmas Eve service or not. Uh, we were certainly blessed everybody was here to see. I'm going to turn it over to Sarah. Uh, Sarah has a couple of letters that she would like to read to us tonight. And we'll begin our worship.
walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in the land of the darkness, among them might have shine. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. The Lord rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, with Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Blessed is he who comes as king, who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and the peace of his people on earth. Please be seated as we sing the first note.
reconciled in Christ, let us confess our need for forgiveness. God of everlasting love, we confess to the man of good in captivity, to the fear of death, by our actions and our love. We have often insisted your good and gracious will. Free us from anxiety and distraction. Cast out our sin and enter in. Give us a new birth of hope as we welcome the child born to save. Christ our Lord. You are my children, I am your Savior, says God, who has redeemed us, who lifts us up and carries us all our days. In mercy and loving kindness, God forgives us all our sins for the sake of Jesus, who delights to call us sisters and brothers. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in that light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wait to the brightness of his glory. Through your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. So I'm watching this feud go back and forth, and the next thing I hear is, call the 
show, what would you do? <laughs> so, you know, now we have this crowd starting to form kind of out in front of the mall, and all these people are gathering, and they're starting to watch this drama unfold. And I thought, you know, I could stand here forever and probably get great entertainment out. But you know, the, car, the lady in the car is probably doing the right thing, so I probably should walk over there. So I, I get over there, and I get kind of next to the driver's door, and the lady's about, I don't know, five or six feet, and she's yelling at the other car, call the police, call the police, I want my cell phone, the lady's in the car, she's already got the police on the phone. And she turns around and looks at me, and she says, what do you want? <laughs> And I thought, well, I got one of two options. I can either go about my shopping way or stand there and take it. And I had just finished up my tempo that morning, so I felt pretty good. I could probably take her on if I had to, right? <laughs> but not, not on, you know, Thursday, it's week of Christmas, you don't want to do that. <coughs> so she keeps going off, and she looks at me, and she said, this lady hit me, and blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, she didn't. And next thing I know, she's saying, call the police, call the police. I thought, i got to stop this. I said, lady, I am the police. <laughs> and she said, you don't look not like no police officer to me. And I says, well, I'm off duty. Here you go. And I show my badge. And she says, fine, and walks off. <laughs> I guess I showed her. <laughs> Well, the last thing that I saw this week, and this is my second story, and I'll, I'll be done with my stories. I don't know how many people watched on TV. This guy out in Texas has almost a million lights going at his house on the outside. Anybody see that this week? It is phenomenal. But why do I bring this up? Well, how many people remember back, I don't know, five or six years ago, the guy down in Cincinnati, Ohio, he put to music his whole house. And what did the neighbors do? They complain. And they want to get him arrested. What did they do to this guy that has a million lights out there? They want to get him arrested. They were trying to spoil Christmas. And I kind of call that the Grinch Syndrome. Isn't it true? Here these guys are. They're an electric bill. I'm sure the electric companies are loving it. I'm sure the neighbors enjoy it. Maybe not a thousand cars that come down the street every hour. And if I was a neighbor, I'd set up a lemonade stand and sell lemonade. Make a little bit of money out of it. Right? What a great story. Well, you know, in the days leading up to Christ's birth, I think about Joseph, I think about Mary, and I think about even their bah humbug stories. You know, and here it is, the baby Jesus, he's about to be born. And where are all the limousines? Where are they at? Where's all the pomp and the circumstances and all the fireworks and all the things that should be happening as, as Mary and Joseph find their way into the city? But they didn't get the royal treatment, did they? Even though we think they should have, they didn't. Instead, Joseph, he goes door to door, end to end, only to be rejected multiple times. Ah, You know, it's interesting to me that the world really hasn't changed that much, has it? We still have a lot of those bah humbug people out there, don't we? Those people that just can't stand Christmas. You know, I was reading this week some articles from atheists People who have no belief in the devil or even Jesus Christ. And I find it kind of funny that they were talking about how special it is around their house to put up the Christmas tree and to put up all the lights and the fact that they would probably have a baby Jesus and a little manger on their tree. How ironic that is. But you know, I think about the Grinches of this world. I think about things that aren't so pleasant. But then I think about Jesus' birth, and I, I picture Mary riding on a donkey, coming across the plains. And here's Joseph. He's leading Mary along on this donkey, and I know he's trying to be very delicate and gentle, and he doesn't want to go over too many bumps because there's not that many bathrooms around, 
You know, when women are pregnant, they've got to go to the bathroom a lot. So he's trying to be gentle, and here he goes, leading her on the way. And I can hear Joseph and Mary talking back and forth as these rejections come back and forth, and Mary's probably saying, what's up? Why is all this going on? Why is this happening to us? What, would, what have we done? We've got nothing. Well, you know, rather than be bitter, rather than to be sour and angry all the time, Mary and Joseph chose to be faithful. And in fact, they persevered, didn't they? They got through the trials that were before them because they knew the preciousness of the gift that Mary had inside of them. You know, it's not too uncommon for our journey in life, is it? That we have people coming up against us all the time, situations in our life that just don't make us very happy. But we can either choose joy or choose sadness. We can either live in despair and moan and groan and complain, or we can be like Mary and Joseph, who were faithful, who kept on persevering, who, who kept on moving despite all the things that were against them. But you know what was so captivating to me was the fact that Mary and Joseph were humble. They had an opportunity to take care of this baby Jesus about to come. And in fact, I can, I can just see those big Hollywood lights as they stream across the sky. We get to see those in big parking lots of shopping malls every once in a while, don't we? As we're driving down the road, we see these big beams going back and forth. Is that how it was when Jesus was born? No. It wasn't the big lights. What was even more spectacular was the star that shone in the sky. That star that we all adorn on our Christmas trees, don't we? That star that shone so bright, it illuminated the land around them. It was kind of that guide for people to see. Even the wise men needed that star and that light to guide their journey and their path to get to Jesus with their gifts. But you know, as I think about the lights, I think about looking into the stars. I think about the people on Black Friday who went out at 3 o'clock in the morning. How many of them were looking up? Oh, yes, no, I do too. Right? Did you, let me ask, when you got there, was the sky clear? Uh, no. For this purpose, say yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the sky was clear. <laughs> and there shone great light. The light of Best Buy. The light of Target. <laughs> it's not Target, it's Target. And Myers and whoever else is over there. Those are the lights that shone. Those are the lights that guided your way. But how many of us look up into those night skies that happen and see the spectacular wonder that God made? And to see all those stars that twinkle up there and see a comet every once in a while dash through and then see some people that have foil on their head saying they found a big moon rock in the back of their yard. But it's spectacular, the things that they saw that night that Jesus was born. That light that shone. And it just made me think about the lights that we see. The lights that we have in here that illuminate. The light that leads our path. And that's the light that I want to leave us with today. Because it reminds me of how Jesus was a light to us. It reminds us that he came into this world sin-filled to be just like us, a gift that we may be set free. He was a light unto the world, a light that we should show others this holiday season. You know, we have a choice to be the Bah Humbug, the Grinch, but what do we choose? We choose joy because we think of that baby Jesus and what he meant to us in our lives, and that light that has come to us to share to this world, that we shout on
on the mountaintop and we'll get to sing, go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ was born. And that is the light that leads us and allows us to shine that light on the ground for others to follow. We have found that light here at St. Michael. Christ's people have come. They come to worship each week. And they've said, Pastor, we've seen that light through your people. They've invited us to be here as we come. We worship and glorify Jesus. That is the light that I hope is in your life. And the light that you can show to others. And to be that light unto their path that leads them to Jesus Christ. <laughs>
and not wanting of things that we think that we need. Lord, in your mercy. Your prayer, your prayer. Father, we pray for the poor of this world, the poor of our community, those, Lord, who are going to go without this year. Lord, they're barely even making it by trying to put food on the table, let alone to try, put, try putting gifts under the tree. Father, be with those families who are in need. Be with those, Lord, who are yearning for you. Those, Lord, whose lives have not yet found you. Father, we pray that these, your people, can be a light unto their path. The light that only comes from you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, for our soldiers and all those who are protecting this country. Father, those who are overseas or even coming home. Father, we give you thanks for their service. We give you thanks for their faithfulness and giving their lives and time away from their families so that we may be safe. Father, for those families this year who have lost loved ones as a result of war, Father, we pray for them as we know they will miss their loved ones. Father, bring them comfort and peace. Father, those who are in need, those who are hospitalized tonight, Father, be with them. Strengthen them and guide them and give them the healing that they need. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Father, again, thank you for this gathering tonight. These, you are faithful, who have come to celebrate and to worship and glorify you. Father, we give you thanks and praise. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. In the night in which Jesus Christ was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples, he took bread, and he gave thanks and broke that bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body given for you. Again, after supper, he took of the cup. After he gave thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Take this, all of you, and drink as often as you like, and do this for the remembrance of me. Would you join me with the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
somebody. We don't want to be a Grinch. Remember that from the message. If you will take your candle, and please keep it upright, once we have it lit, you, the unburnt candle, if you would, turn it into the candle that's already lit and bring it all the way back up, and then give it to your neighbor to share. We don't want darkness on this side and only light over here. We all want to share the light. And then I'm reminded of a tradition here at St. Michael that as you hear the word light, or anywhere in light as we sing Silent Night, please raise your candle up, and then you can bring it back down very carefully and safely. And that will be quite a few times as we go through Silent Night. And I'll ask the ushers to start counting the lights as we get everybody lit, and I will come out with my candle uh, to get everybody going.
how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God, glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to all God's favors. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Come on, let us go to Bethlehem. Let us see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us all about. They ran to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. Then the shepherds told everyone what had happened, and the angel said to them about this child who was true. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary quietly treasured these things in her heart she thought about them all. The shepherds went back to their fields and their flocks, glorifying and praising God for what the angels had told them. Because they had seen the child, just as the angel had said. Let us sing our last line of silent night.
tonight. Thank you all for worshiping with us. Pray you have a very